it's a great privilege to be able to stand where I'm standing right now. Many times it's a painful privilege, but it's still a great privilege. I can't think of a more honorable calling than to be chosen by the Creator to be one of those whom he, she has commissioned to teach the truth. It's a noble call. Um, I wasn't one of those kind of people who wanted to be a preacher. And sometimes I listen to people who say, you know, they, they want to preach. They want to go into the ministry. I say, you don't know what you're asking for. <laughs> you just don't know what you're asking for. You know, because to really, truly be a messenger of God, you have to say the very opposite of what the masses want to hear. thinking seriously again about my responsibility, my commitment to my responsibility, I ask myself, what is it, Ray, that you really, really want to do? As what, what, what effect do you really want to have with God's people? And the only thing that could really come into my mind at, at that particular point was the healing of the African body, collective. Oh, I know there are some of you individuals who are doing quite well. I know that, you know. Some of you have a pretty good income. I know that. Some of you couldn't ask for anything more, you know? Individually speaking. Mm -hmm. Then there's some of you that are not doing too good. You know, things are not going like you want them to go. You know, you, you need more money. I think a whole lot of us, huh? <laughs> but I'm talking about the body of my people. When I look at the body of my people, I realize that there's still a lot of healing yes, sir. that needs to be done. As I ride down the street yes, yes. and I see my brothers, mm -hmm. not them, mm -hmm. my brothers yes, yes, yes. and my sisters, who are totally lost. Yes. It hurts when I see that. Yes. When I encounter circumstances among my people who, as I've said previously, love God. Mm -hmm. yes. They really love God. That's one thing about black folk. There's not a people on this planet that are more God-fearing or God-loving than black folk. It's something in us. We have an affinity to that which we perceive to be God. Notice how I said that now. To that which we perceive to be God. If we think it's God, we love it. <laughs> I'm concerned with the healing of not just the body, not just the mind, but the spirit of my people. I'm 
concerned with the expansion of African consciousness. Yeah. The Setian forces attacked me yesterday and said, don't you get up there tomorrow talking this African stuff. These folk are tired of hearing about Africa. And I said, set. <laughs> the Lord rebuke you. Yeah. Yeah. I used to say Satan, the Lord rebuke yeah. you. But in Kim it is called set. I said, set the Lord rebuke you. Because you see, brothers and sisters, there is no other way for the healing mm -hmm. of us as a people collective other than a consciousness of who we are. Yeah. There's no other way to be healed. I'm looking, I, I, I really want to see an accelerated advancement of African-centered thinking. Now notice I said accelerated. <coughs> In other words, I want us to really begin to understand, as even the Bible says in the fifth chapter of Ephesians, we've got to redeem the time. Yeah. We've wasted too much time. Yeah. There's a passage in the Bible that says, Lord, teach us to number our days yeah. that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Transliterated, it actually means, Lord, help me understand how to spend my time. Yes, yes sir. <clears throat> so that my time will amount to something. Yes. The connotation with that is the concept that there are people who have been on this planet for 50, 60, 70 years. Mm -hmm. But when you really total up the days that matter, they're not even one year old. Isn't that tragic? How so many people are wasting time. Looking good, but wasting time. Can sing like a sparrow, but wasting time. Make all kind of money but wasting time. <clears throat> There's a predicament that we are in and most of us don't know we're in it. Let me tell you what that predicament is. We are participants in a program that has been strategically, intentionally, and specifically designed for world domination. Are y'all following me? And the only way that those planners can dominate and control the societies of the world is by misleading the people in those societies to believe in a manner that would not be threatening to those who are in power. Yeah. Yeah. Did I lose you when I said that? The subject for today is the bloodline conspiracy uh -huh. yes. in religion. <laughs> the bloodline conspiracy in religion. Yeah. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. What I'm getting ready to share with you, I have never heard a preacher talk what I'm getting ready to share with y'all. Never. And 
I think I'm the only one crazy enough to stand or bold enough, that's what I really meant to say, to stand and let you know this information from the pulpit. Because see, this position that I'm standing in, according to the mandates of the Church of England, Notice I said of the Church of England, I'm only supposed to teach you certain things. Now there's a book that I encourage you to get. You may even be able to pull it up on the internet. It's called Certain Homilies. Yes, sir. That was decreed to be taught in the pulpits from the Roman Church and the Church of England. And anything outside those homilies, uh -huh. ministers are not supposed to talk about that. The reason why is because the program is, we've got to keep the masses under control. So the only way to keep the masses under control is to feed them doctrines and concepts and precepts that we, the power brokers, have fabricated. Yeah. If we do that and the people believe that, then everything will run in accordance with our program. Yeah. Every now and then somebody stands up with a Christ-like ministry uh -huh. or a liberator yes, yeah. that goes against the grain uh -huh. that does not walk in the trodden path. Those are the ones that and the first one comes to my mind is Marcus Garvey. Yes, sir. And of course, you know what they had to do, the brother. They had to put him out of the country. You know? The bloodline conspiracy in religion. Now, bear with me for a moment here as I give you an historical backdrop. You got to understand this historical backdrop to grab this thing here. Go back with me in time. If you use your mind to just kind of go back through the corridors of time to a year called 359 BCE. There was a man named Philip of Macedonia. And the Macedonians had just suffered a defeat at the hands of the Illyrians. Mm -hmm. Macedonia was in political and military turmoil and Philip immediately set about to bring the people of Macedonia under his control. Yeah. After exacting revenge on the Illyrians by defeating them, in 358 BCE, Philip sought to bring all of Upper Macedonia under his control and make everybody loyal to him. Uh -huh. Okay? Now his primary method, follow this, his primary method of establishing and creating alliances and strengthening loyalties was through marriage. Yeah. He would use the influence of women to gain loyalty to himself. The most important marriage to Philip was to a woman named Olympias. and Olympias gave birth to a man by the name or boy child by the name of Alexander. Yeah. Alexander, I call him the barbarian. Yes. I call him Alexander the invader. Uh -huh. White folk call him Alexander the Great. Uh -huh. In history, children, y'all are taught to call him Alexander the Great. Uh 
And that's what they want you to put on your test paper. Just put Alexander. Yeah. Cause wasn't nothing great about him. And if they mark you wrong on your test, come tell us and the African village will address it. You don't have to put, you don't have to acknowledge somebody is great if they were not great. Challenge your teacher and ask from whose perspective was he great? You see, Philip had several, uh, several political and military innovations that helped to make Macedonia a major power. Follow this now. He began to practice allowing the sons of nobles to receive academic training in his personal court. And here the sons would not only develop a fierce loyalty to Philip, but he would also hold the children hostage to keep their parents from interfering with his authority. That's the kind of man he was. Wasn't nothing good about him. I don't actually know too many white folk who is something good about him. I mean, white folk in leadership positions. I really mean that. Their power, there's a phrase people that says, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And there's not one European in history who was a good leader. Or maybe I should say, and I mean good in the real sense of the term. Philip became obsessed with his military conquest and at the Council of Corinth, Philip outlined his system for ruling other countries. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Other countries. Philip declared war on Persia. To further his conquest, he would send thousands of troops into other lands. He would send out what we in the military or Marine Corps today call recon units, disguised as emissaries. And when he received report from his intelligence officers of the wisdom and knowledge or the spirituality of the great Northeast African people, in his desire to have conquest, said, I must have that land. Mm -hmm. right, right. Do y'all see this history here? Yes. yes. He heard about how awesome it was in Egypt. Uh. He heard about the massive temples that were there. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. He heard about the great Egyptians' armor. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. He heard about Zosier Netherket. He heard about the accomplishments of Imhotep. He heard about the fact that this great vizier, architect, musician, mathematician, astrologer, builder, grandmaster builder, had to things that they could not even begin to conceive and Philip said I got to have that it's deep man so he shared this information with his military forces of whom the commander was his son Alexander. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, follow this thing yeah. there. But before he could get out into his conquering program like he really wanted to, on his way into Asia Minor to conquer that, he was stabbed and assassinated. Mm -hmm. So his son Alexander uh -huh. assumed 
his throne and decided to carry out his daddy's wishes of conquering other lands. So what happened? Alexander went into Egypt. How many of y'all have ever heard of Alexandria? Y'all yes, mm -hmm. don't mind this history lesson, do you? So you got to understand this, people. You got to understand how this program came into being in the first place. When they went into Kemet, when they went into Africa and saw the great achievements of these people, they knew that the only way to conquer this land was to deceive these people. First of all, it was I come in peace. Uh -huh. Say that. Go ahead. Can't we all just get along? And we African people, as we are, loving, welcome our enemy with open arms. Welcome them into our home, only to find that they were a Trojan horse. Go ahead, go ahead. So these Greco-Roman Europeans came in and subverted our land from the inside out. Look at the person next to you and say, you got to be careful who you let into your ranks. Did y'all hear that? You got to be careful who you let into your ranks because their method of defeat is called infiltration. Well, after getting into Africa and really seeing firsthand the African spiritual system of salvation, they said the only way we're going to defeat these people because their faith in God is too strong. So what we have to do is we have to supplant or subvert their so-called faith belief system. Yeah, buddy, they came in and when they came into power and the Ptolemies, in case y'all don't know who the Ptolemies are, the Ptolemies were European pharaohs. They weren't home folk. They were invaders who came in and usurped the throne of Egypt. You can tell who the Ptolemies are when you go over there because you see all of these blank chanus inscribed in stone. And see, if there's no name in the chanu or the katouche, that meant that they weren't really one of us. All right. <laughs> you had all these Ptolemies that ascended the throne. European rulers in Egypt. But what's deep about it is not only did they ascend the throne, but they wanted to read the scriptures out what the true words of the gods were. The Mekunetta. They'd see it on the walls of the temples. They'd see it in the tombs and in the wombs of the pyramids and they couldn't read it. So you know what they did? They found some Egyptians to read and translate this for Translate this for us. And thousands upon thousands Thousands of black Africans died because they would not share the sacred words of God with these invaders. This is not for you. You're not going to tell us what it says? Off with your head. Boom. A lot of heads came off. All because they would not reveal the secret. Sound for me, don't it, brothers? But there was a group of sellouts. There was a group of sellouts, doggone it. And these invaders found this group of sellouts who said, listen, we'll tell you what it means. 
would tell you what it means, but the only problem is they didn't really tell them exactly what it meant. They translated it for them in a way that would spare their lives. Right. Right. And of course, they portrayed or betrayed our own people. Right. Once gaining a foothold into the spiritual system of the African people, these folk from this bloodline of Philip of Macedonia decided that they must dominate the world. And again, for those of you who may be listening, or for those of you here today, write down these two words, manifest destiny. Write those two words down. Those two words is the title or the title of a doctrine of what is called European expansionism. It's been going on for a long time. That means that's when they go into other countries and other cultures and literally take that land from those people. Brothers and sisters, do y'all do y'all have an idea? of how many Africans died resisting European invasion? Look at the person next to you and say, no, you ain't got no idea. <laughs> As we say every Sunday, we're talking about more than 600 million who were lost in the Middle Passage alone. And they won't let you forget the 6 million Jews. Come on. You, oh, they won't let you forget that. They put Schindler's List out. They won't let you forget about these so-called imposter Jews. Notice what I said. Imposter Jews, that's the best they can come up with because the word Jew comes from, that, from the word Judah. And I'm waiting for somebody to verify the existence of Judah. Somebody verify it for me. Remember I put a challenge out on the radio a few couple of months ago? I put out a challenge, I'll do it one more time. For those who may be watching this on television, somebody please give me the name of a white man that's before Adam. Name a white person that predates Adam. I'm waiting for you to answer that question. I should look in the camera since you're looking at me on television. I'm waiting for you to answer that question. You cannot do it. And the reason why you cannot do it, invader, barbarian, is because you have no past. Am I talking too hard? When you don't have a past, you must create myth and propaganda to supplement the facts of your existence. That's why they started with Adam. See, this bloodline in order to control the world, you must deceive the world. And this bloodline comes down from Philip all the way to Cleopatra, who married the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar, bore him a son who became Ptolemy the 14th. She also bore twins. How many of y'all have ever heard of Mark Anthony before? Yes, All right, you, those who you know your history? Yes. Cleopatra's son, bloodline of Philip of Macedonia, whose son was Alexander. Coming further on down, we got another descendant in the same bloodline <laughs> named Herod. Yes. The great, same bloodline. Coming further on down, we got another descendant, same bloodline, called King James. Oh right here. Right. Right. The man whose name is on this book is of the same bloodline of Philip of Macedonia. Oh, yes, oh I got to expose this mess here. Oh so you can see, brothers and sisters, this 
this program is. Doesn't just stop with King James. Mm, mm, mm. Prince Charles, Queen Elizabeth, his mama. Bloodline of the Roman Piso family of Alexander the Barbarian, of Philip of Macedonia, the same bloodline, the same family. Now what's deep about that people is because the Piso family, as you heard me say, and I said in nine o'clock class, they are the authors of the New Testament. Not Matthew, not Mark, not Luke, not John. makes your hair curl up. I know it does. But the only way you're going to free yourself from the grasp of European domination is you got to first see how those fingers are holding you. I'm trying my best to. It, it, it's deep because this thing is, is, is embedded into the very fiber of our existence and we don't even know it. Yes, sir. Yes. They put together fictitious, yes. they put together lies yes. with such veracity yes, sir. and backed it with such finance yes. that it became a reality for those who don't know any better. I was one of them. When you know that, whew, man, this is deep. When you know that a family that such as this could be so powerful as to where they could literally write into history. Your spiritual experience, yes. that's power. When they can make up a character and put them in the Bible and you get joy when you think about it, that's power. Good God Almighty, that thing is deep, ain't it? See, you're not supposed to know this. You're not supposed to understand. See, in other words, people, if, if the name Pisa mm -hmm. had been coming right down through all this, we would all say, no, wait a minute, something ain't right here. Something ain't right. Because how, why, why Pisa's got to be over everything? Right. That's what we would say. That's right. But because the last name is different, yes, sir. We, we think it's well, that's exactly the problem, y'all. It's only the name different. Same bloodline. It gets better yet. Go ahead, go ahead. From Philip of Macedonia, this same man who decreed 350 years BC to control the world, believe it or not, a great, 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 now those of you who out joy riding don't even pay no attention to what I'm saying because you ain't interested in going nowhere anyway I'm talking about those of you who got the destination in your mind of liberating your people hear what I'm telling you hear what I'm telling you George, the first president of the United States bloodline Second president of the United States, John Adams, same bloodline. Third president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson, same bloodline. Y'all, don't y'all think something's wrong here? John Quincy Adams, second president's son, sixth president, same bloodline. 
From Philip of Macedonia down through Alexander, down through the Piso family, down through Alexander the Barbarian, through King James, through Herod the Great, all these folk, same doggone bloodline is in charge of everything today. All the way up to a man called George Bush. Same bloodline, people. Same bloodline. To a man named Bill Clinton, same bloodline. Now we got another Bush. Bush's baby boy. Same bloodline. Well, Pastor, what has that got to do with anything? Good God Almighty. I try so hard to show you how this is all intertwined in your enslavement and in my enslavement and the subjugation of us as a people. You got to remember, folk, that this whole program was put in place because they saw the genius of Africa. <laughs> African spirituality and how powerful it was. Yes, yes, yes. And the only way to prevent these same people from the African bloodline from resurrecting themselves and returning to their greatness is to create a lie and make them believe in it. Am I talking too excited here? And my boy Crazy says, I got to be strong with this because I know what I'm dealing with here. Who knows, this may be the most dangerous message I've ever preached. Yeah, I hear y'all. I appreciate that. I, pre I appreciate that. You're so kind. I love you dearly. I love you dearly. But see, these folk are so powerful, y'all, that when y'all sleep, yes, sir. those of you who got my back, when y'all are asleep, yes, they can maneuver very, very well. Yes. So I'm glad God got my back. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We must understand, people, we must understand that it's important for you to realize for your own spiritual growth and development and liberation that you have been bamboozled. Yes, Come on, let's admit it. Let's admit it. I have been bamboozled. Big time. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that I have spent the greater part of my life preparing myself to carry out this conspiracy? To be a participating instructor of the bloodline conspiracy in religion? They gave me degrees to teach this conspiracy. Oh, we could have a big, we could have a mega church if we just teach the conspiracy. Good God Almighty. And look at the person next to you and say, mega church ain't important. It's not important. The process of liberation is painful. And I deal, I live this pain. I live it to the point of, in fact, in preparing this message, I got so stressed. From the, from, from the, Thoughts. Don't you talk this stuff. Don't you talk this stuff. I got so stressed from it that 
the same effect that I had from Bell's palsy, you know, I just want your mouth kind of go one side, you know, I, I began to feel that last night, you know. And it's that pressure there. I mean, you know, we always say, I'm going to tell the truth anyhow. And don't nobody stand with me. I'm going to tell the truth. But see, y'all, a truth is going to come that is so awesome and so powerful that you really going to have to think again. Do you really mean what you say? And I had to remind myself, I vowed and Kemet when raised in the craft of Amun Ra. My obligation in our earth was to leave from this place and tell the truth. was still there saying, go back and tell what happened. Yes. Go back and tell the truth. Go back and open the eyes of the people so that our great, great, great grandchildren can be free yes. from this bondage that they put on my people. See y'all, we have confused. Yes. We have confused spirituality with jumping up and down. We think that because it feels good, it's godly. We think that because, hey, woo, hey, we think that because we go through that, God is moving. There's nothing more than the result of your own subliminal, suggestive, hypnotic suggestion. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you can't feel good and rejoice. But how in the hell are you going to jump up and down? When your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews are getting shot in the chest in the street, how are you going to jump up and down? up and down when your people are being wiped out and eliminated how you gonna jump up and down into a hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah that's a novocaine that God dog it that's a novocaine program to keep you anesthetized to what's really going on I'm angry here when I look and I, and I, I mean, y'all, I'm not just bringing up some stuff I just ran up on. I researched this. I verified this to see that there could be a people so well in place that they own theology seminaries. That they own universities that's training our children. Yes, yes, yes. Programming our children to be their agents. Programmed me. Oh, buddy. There's a conspiracy. Look at the person next to you and say, We've got to unravel the conspiracy. <laughs> Traveling the conspiracy is some serious work, people. Y'all yes. hearing me? Yes. Some of y'all gonna have to leave. Now watch what now don't don't get me wrong, listen to me carefully. Some of you are going to have to leave. I don't want you to leave. But some of you are gonna have to leave. You know why? Because you're not that serious. You understand what I'm saying? 
You're not that serious. You like the idea of learning. Right, right. But you're not ready to be a warrior. Right. Right. And you don't get on the battlefield unless you're ready to fight. You don't do that. You, nobody in their right mind goes and stands out on the battlefield to my, hey y'all, you look, look kind of nice out here. Woo, bullet went by, whoa. It don't work like that, people. When you get on the battlefield, you have a weapon in your hand. And you get into the trenches and you're prepared to eliminate your enemy or your enemy will eliminate you. That's what warfare is all about. How many of you have ever heard about spiritual warfare? Let me, how many of your hand? Oh, y'all, y'all heard of spiritual warfare before. Well, brothers and sisters, let me share something with you. Spiritual warfare is real. Yes, yes, it's real. We're at war with spiritual wickedness in high places. Even the Bible says it and it says it so well. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. And then it starts naming the armor. Doggone, it's so right. It says, have on the breastplate of righteousness. Look at the person next to you and say, you got to be right. I appreciate the water, but y'all are so distracting when y'all, I'd rather be thirsty. So y'all know in the future, okay? Look at the person next to you and say, I'd rather be right. I'd rather be right than popular. Popularity brings money. Bro Clark, popularity bring a good Lexus. I could use a Lexus. But doggone, I'd rather walk and be a messenger for truth than to ride in a Mercedes Benz and have God angry with me. Am I making sense here? the shield of faith. You got to believe in yourself. Yeah. If you believe, y'all remember that song? Oh, yes. Within your heart you'll know no one can change the path that you must go. Isn't that deep? We got more faith in a concept that the white man gave to us than we got in the person sitting next to you right now on the pew. Yeah. Yeah. In money, Look at everybody say Imani. Imani. Come on, say it like you mean it. Imani. Imani. Now, some of y'all don't even know. Some of y'all thought I said money. Some of y'all said yeah, money. <laughs> no, not Imani. Imani. I-M-A-N-I. -I. It means faith. But faith in yourself. Faith in your brothers and your sisters. Faith in your legitimate leaders. Not your illegitimate leaders. I don't need to get on them right now. I don't need to get on them right now. But we got enough illegitimate leadership. We got enough leadership in the black community that's selling out the black community because they're agents for the bloodline that I just finished telling y'all about. You know what's really tragic, people, is when people are agents for the enemy and don't know they're agents. That is the most dangerous agent because they really honestly think that they're on the right track. Mm -mm. Uh, if you go deeply enough into the genealogical research of this bloodline conspiracy, you'll find that all of the presidents of this country are related to the bloodline mm -hmm. of Philip of Macedonia. Mm -hmm. It's deep. Y'all think that you're voting 
has something to do with who's going to be the president? Don't y'all believe that? That's what they, see that's the program, that's what they want you to believe. They've already decided when the child is born if he's going to be president or not. Boy George, they've been grooming him for this day. They've been grooming George Bush for this day. He can be dumb as I don't know what. He'll be the president. Sure. And don't feel, listen, if Gore gets in, you'll find he's in the bloodline too. Don't matter. Long as this is the bloodline conspiracy. Not just here. Scottish families, the Windsor family of Great Britain, the Dutch families, the Franks, all in the bloodline of these people. Now why is it important that this bloodline exists? And again I tell you, for control and domination. There's no people as powerful as a people who know who they are. I'll say that again. There is no people as powerful as a people who know who they are. You got that? Once you know who you are, once you know who your God is, there's no stopping you. Because the ancestors walk by your side. The Neturu, the gods walk with you when you know who you are. So to keep you from becoming strong, to keep you socially, socially, emotionally, politically, intellectually, and spiritually oppressed. They must not allow you to know who you are. Do you understand what I'm saying, people? Give you a program to excite you. That's why we like amusement parks. Think with me. That's why we like amusement parks. Y'all know what the word amuse means? Amuse means don't think. Muse means think. Amuse means don't think. So they build what they call theme parks. theme parks oh you know we do I need a break honey I had a hard week see that's the kind of pressure I'm yeah, now, 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 now pastor you saying we ain't got no business going to Six Flags <laughs> the truth of the matter is no we really don't you know why we really ain't got no business going to Six Flags because it has not one thing to do with the liberation of you and your people. That's right. That's exactly right. That's what I'm saying, folks. We must become focused. Everything that we think, say, or do needs to be geared toward African liberation. Yes. Everything. Once you're focused on that, you'll be surprised, y'all. Your whole lifestyle will change. Your whole attitude will change. Once you really become focused on African liberation, you won't go on that job and grin in that white man's face when they tell you that corny joke. Once you get focused on African liberation, they'll walk up to you and say, listen, have you heard this one? You say, I don't want to hear this one. I don't even want to hear it. 
You know? Once you get focused. That's right. Some of us are on our way there. Malachi 3.18 says something very powerful. In fact, let me read it right quick. For our close. Malachi 3.18. It says, Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Did y'all hear that? The day is going to come, Africans, where you will return to an awareness of your true African spirituality. day comes, you will be able to discern between those who are righteous and those who are wicked. When you get to that day in your life, you'll be able to determine or discern between that person who truly serves God and that person who does not truly serve God. But that cannot happen until you first had a Sankofa experience. Can't happen until then. Okay. Got to get ready to close now. I plead with you, my brothers and my sisters, from the bottom of my heart, to really take serious the privilege that God has given to you. Many of you sitting here have come to this place after having said years ago you'd never go to church again because you got fed up with the games and the program. Some of you here have come here from other churches because you've heard the word of truth and it pricked something in you and you begin to check it out and find out for yourself that there is truth being taught. And here you are. Some of you are here because you grew up here. And this is your church. That's far as it's gone. Some of you. Not all of you. Others of you are here because you want to see what's going on. Tell them like it is. Some are here just to go report back to others. What's going on over here? We're going to have it all. That's really not my problem. My problem is to stand firm and teach you the truth. Believing that the African Holy Ghost will move upon your heart to say, here I am, Lord. I'm ready to do what I was born for, to do. I'm ready to be all that I can be for you. I'm ready to say, here I am. Use me in your service. Here am I, Lord. There's an old phrase that says, the harvest is ripe. But the laborers are few. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of folk out there in the field acting like they're working. Oh, sure it is. They're not really working. Because there's only one work for black folk in an oppressed society. 
Y'all hear me? Yes. And that is freeing ourselves from oppression. Our work is not to impress the oppressor. Our work is not to grin with the oppressor. Our work is not to get patted on the back by the oppressor. Our work is really to knock the oppressor out. That's really our work. Only a fool loves his oppressor. Think about that. Think about it. Think about it. Only a fool loves those who are oppressing him.